He is one of the ambassadors for the forthcoming National Music Day, which is surprising, as he's better known for playing lovable screen rogues. His first film was called The Wild and the Willing, a philosophy he embraced for quite a while, and even today he's not completely tamed or entirely unwilling. His slogan these days is, Antiques is the game, love joys the name. This charity concert tonight at your mate Dottie Groombarn's place. Yeah, I sold your tickets for it. You know who's playing, don't you? The Hot House Flowers. Dottie said she'll introduce me to them. Well, I can do that, right now. You? How come? Now they're on your doorstep, wondering if you'll put them up for the night. My doorstep? My God. Oh, my clothes are not even dressed properly. Well, neither are they. They don't have to kip here, you know, Jane. They can just drive the bus up the drive. No, I wouldn't dream of it. All right, fellas, you're on. No! <laughs> Liam. Hello. It really is you. A great, great title, title for, for a song. song. <laughs> <laughs> Day to the art, blarney. <laughs> thank you. Jerry. Jerry. Hey, Jane. Hello. How the hell's your half? Oh, thank you. Uh, just let me get dressed now. Show you all around. Uh, Peter. How are you? Lovely to meet you. Hello. Do you mind if we use your kitchen yeah. to make some breakfast? Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Will you be joining us? Well, yes, I'd love to. I mean, I've had coffee, yes, but I haven't eaten yet, so... The kitchen's through here. Okay. And this is Leo Hi. Hi, and Fiechner. Hi, Hi, Leo. How are you doing? Nice to yeah. meet you. How are you? About, what, what have you got in there? It's a lucky charm, Lovejoy. We take it with us everywhere we go. Oh, yeah, but exactly what it's is love it? Lovejoy, don't poke your nose in where it isn't wanted. Welcome to Ian McShane. <laughs> We'll be seeing the band later, as you know, so that's a treat. Yeah, they're five terrific lads, yeah. It's been a disastrous week for the old British football, of course, isn't it? And what do you feel? Do you feel sick as a parrot, gutted, or what? Well, I, I, I was so thrilled with Manchester United, which, you know, my, my father used to play for them, and I, I, I dearly love them. And I was at the, um, the anniversary, 25th anniversary of them winning the European Cup last weekend. And I was so carried away by meeting Eusebio and seeing George and Bobby Charlton and Dennis Law again, I forgot that somebody came up and said, England have just equalised in the last minute. And I thought, like, oh, yeah, sure, because, um, I don't know, I, didn't, I don't sort of have a, a real... It's terrible. I don't have that much of an interest. I mean, obviously, you want them to win. I think it's sad what's happened. I think it's sad that the players have been to blame. I think that something's been rotten in the state of... Um, the higher echelons of English football for some time now, but that's another mm, story. It's all know, about to blow out, isn't it? It's yeah. going to happen. It's going to happen. As you said, your dad was a Manchester United footballer. Mm. Uh, is, is he still a scout? He scouts them. He's always been interested. I mean, my dad's uh, a player that really had his best years taken away from him like, by the war, like a lot of people did. I mean, mm. he came out when he was 26, played for Bolton Wanderers with Nat Lofthouse, and finished his career with United in the 50s before the Magic Busby Babes. But I was like 11 then and sort of knew them all, you know. Mm. And, they looked, about, the hero. they looked about 46 years old, didn't they, on the screen? Well, it, 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 well it, the, other, the other night, see, you know, seeing Sir Matt again, who was, I've known again since I was that big, and Bobby and George and Dennis and all the old players, uh, I mean, they all look as if they could play now. Yeah. But that particular team that died in the crash of Munich, which was, you know, average age, something like 21, yeah. was a marvellous side. Yeah. And the side that won the European Cup, I'll tell you, it, was, it wasn't the great aside, but they were the first English team to do it, and who knows, they could repeat the uh, next year. God Your will. own plans originally were to be a player. Well, no, not really. I wasn't that good. I mean, I, I'm a good part player, like a lot of people are. Um, I, was, I played for Manchester School Boys and Stratford Boys when I was 11, 12. I had a bad accident for two years. I broke my leg. I made a habit of that. I broke it again when I was playing in amateurs uh, 20 years later. But I decided then, with 14 years ago when I broke it, then that was it. I'd take up... Uh, kind of pursuits like golf and tennis. So. But what did your dad say when you turned down, as I believe you did, a, a test uh, for one big team? All that whole thing uh, about, I could, have, I could have been, like everybody says, yeah. yeah, I could have been, gee, I could have turned down and tested Chicago Bulls or basketball. But mm. Every actor somehow is a, a sportsman. No, I mean, they said to me, I think out of kindness, like I, I played. I mean, I already played with guys who could play, like Phil Chisnell, who went on to be play for United and Everton. You know good players when you play with them when you're 14. And I said very kindly, thank you very much, but I'll be taking somebody else's place. What did your dad say that when you became an actor? Uh, 
He'd always wanted me to be an actor, do you know? Really? Funny, isn't it? No, he'd no intention of that. He thought... No, that. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had a teacher at school, a man called Leslie Ryder, who I think, you know, one's lucky sometimes in life. You find someone who gives you a direction very strongly. He was the teacher at school that did drama. I mean, he was the geography teacher, but he did, like, the play. And he said, you'll play the part this year. I mean, I didn't... I said, fine, you know, I could have painted a set or done some makeup, whatever. He said, you'll play the part. And I said, fine. So I played Cyrano de Bergerac. And it went down very well, apparently, at our boys' school. You know, we had a, a lad with a, a lad called David Robinson played Roxanne, you know, the girl. It's yeah. very... It's a funny old business, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen it's still it? a funny old business. I mean, I still feel like that 30 years later. I mean, that's not mm. really acting to me. Is, it's, it's, it's fun and it's, it's a terrific way of earning a mm. living. And, I mean, I'm, I love doing Lovejoy now. It's great. And, um, but if somebody had ever said... If somebody said to me, now, you're an actor, I said, well, yeah, I suppose so. It's mm. Hang upon your shingle, actor. Doctor, lawyer, my mother would have said. That's fine, but actor? Oh, you know. Mm. Still, you've done all right, so they're, they're It's happy. very lucky. Sometimes, you, you know, that's... And you're not seeing it. Roxanne anymore? Nope, I'm not Good. seeing Roxanne anymore. What about and music as well? I mean, you released an album not very long ago, and I mentioned just now that you're, what, an ambassador of music. What, what is this? Yeah, well, this got, got together... Tim <clears> Renton, <throat> the former arts minister of Mick Jagger, apparently discussed it a few years ago, and it came into being last year uh, for the first time. And this year, it takes place over the weekend. They're calling it the longest day. It starts the 26th of June, the Saturday in the morning, goes on till the evening of the 27th. And Harvey Goldsmith is the um, chairman of it, and it's funded by the Arts Council and National Heritage and Musicians Union. And it takes in, you know, jazz, reggae. I mean, there's, I think Boulay and the LSO are doing a doing a Handel's firework music at the mm. Barbican, followed by a firework display on the 26th. There's a thousand gigs going on of all kinds over that weekend. And actually, there's now, at the moment, sponsored by, uh, I think it's Yamaha and Federal Express, there's a National Music Day Roadshow, which is going all over the country when, with a band and mm. people can join in. And it's eventually to give sponsorship to young musicians and workshops in classrooms. And it's a very worthwhile cause. God, you remember that well. Uh, uh, you, were, um, you were in L.A. for <laughs> 16 years, I think. Getting back to your... Well, I still career. keep a place there, but it's nice now. I visit it now and again. You know, I go every... Every week or every... I mean, I, I mean a week every week. Every, a week a year now, which is... Um... But you came back from there to do Lovejoy, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I read... I found the books and came back in. We did one series in 86. And, it's a, it's uh... a sort of antiques roadshow with sex, isn't it? Oh, why well, sex? No, we're too... <laughs> we're too early for that. We don't, our, our, our time is 7.30. It's a good family programme. The kid, That's what I like about it, is the kids love it as well, also. It doesn't... Because it, it doesn't appeal to any particular age range, I don't But there's that one, you know... That... You've got to have that element in yeah. it. But I think, you know, it's, it's, it takes a different shape next year. We're in the middle of the new series now. We're, uh, we just have the week off, and we start again with episode 7 this year, and uh, episode 2 takes a little... We start... I think the new series comes on in the autumn, and it takes a little... Little shift. I hope there won't be a, a shift dry. Emphasis. There won't be a dry eye in the house in episode two. I well, think. there won't be one after what I'm about to show you because we have a priceless right. piece which should interest you. It's circa 1967. From tomorrow, I mean to send for Doctor Kenny. Perhaps he'll know what ails you. You know. It's her. Hi. You will not come to me. I must go to the meeting place. Oh. God, she's relentless. I almost have to remind my heart to beat. Remind myself to breathe. You think it is my fault I cannot eat, nor rest. She devours my existence. Well, a very young Heathcliff there. You look more like a werewolf. Cathy, what? <laughs> that's the, that was the first time he'd been played all the way through. That's Heathcliff as the old man going to meet Cathy up by Penniston Crag when they go off together. Yes. And, yeah. Is that your first telly? No. No, I, that was about... No, I've been... I started off in, in films, of, as you mentioned, The Wild and Willing. I was already yeah. at drama school, and uh, they asked me... Uh, Rafe Thomas and Betty Box were looking for a, a young unknown to play the lead in this movie, and... Uh, and some agents saw me at drama school and thought I'd be good because young northern lads were all the rage then. Well, you did that in a good northern way. You, you I, well, he was. Straight. He was Yorkshire, yes, was so our, was our age. But it's funny, I, I, mean, I just remember how different it was then that I went off to a test at Pinewood Studio. I took a Green Line bus to Pinewood and lied to the teacher at drama school and said I had to go to the dentist. Went off and did a couple of, as you call them, naughty scenes with Virgi the late dear Virginia Maskell and Samantha Egger, then went back to drama school on the bus and said, 
my tooth was better, you know. Then they uh, offered me the part. It's true.